Hello everybody. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk about a new topic that's different from the distillation that we were talking about before and it is going to be more about the um, uh, kind of fluid mechanics. Um, so it's uh, the to calculate the terminal velocity of falling particles. So it's it's really important in cases of um, like uh, uh, calculating the uh, or doing the uh, uh, design for uh, sedimentation or settling the tanks um, so you need to know the velocity of the particles when it's uh, depositing or uh, falling in this case you need to uh, you can use it to calculate the uh, the dimensions or to design the uh, the, the tank so um, uh, actually it's uh, pretty simple um, you have a, a particle in a fluid and it is uh, uh, there are two forces that are acting on this particle, the gravity, which is going to be mg, which is pretty uh, straightforward. <coughs> and there is the buoyant force or the drag force, I'm sorry, it's the drag force, which is uh, resisting the f flow of, or the, the, the motion of the fluid um, to uh, the bottom of the tank. And um, the, uh, the net force would be to the bottom and the velocity would be VT, which is the terminal velocity. And the terminal velocity actually is calculated from this equation, which is like just doing some um, manipulation for the two uh, forces and doing the force balance and that's it. Um, so the parameters that we have here is the uh, terminal velocity is the V, the rho P is the particle density, the rho is the flow density, the dp is the particle diameter, and the cd is the drag coefficient. So all of them are known parameters, but just the drag coefficient might be a little bit new um, to some of us. And it's actually just a parameter that people use um, to uh, know how uh, strong or weak the resistance of the flow to um, the uh, flow or the falling of the particle will be. And of course it will be a function of the uh, physical properties of the flow. So, um, uh, the drag force or the I mean the CD the drag coefficient can be calculated from uh, whatever one of these four equations depending on uh, which region of the Reynolds number you're in so if it's more Reynolds below 0.1 it will be calculated from here and if it's below between 0.1 and 1000 it will be here and so on and so forth and as we know <coughs> I'm sorry um, the Reynolds number is calculated from rho uh, VD over mu d of the particle the v is the terminal velocity and mu is the viscosity and rho is the uh, fluid density so um uh, the the uh, process would be kind of straightforward but just there is one problem the reynolds number is calculated from the terminal velocity which actually we are trying to calculate so it's 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 not as straightforward as it looks like um, and that's why the process has to be iterative and we saw stuff like this before but uh, here in this case um, there will be one more step which is actually the the reason why I'm, I'm doing this video um, so you will assume the V and then you'll use it to calculate Reynolds and from Reynolds you need to calculate the CD and from CD you will recalculate the V and you will compare the V assumed and the V calculated and then see which is uh, if it's right then they'll be uh, identical if not then you need to do the cycle one more time um, but the problem is that and we did something like this before but the problem here is that this step is not straightforward you have four equations and you need to pick the right equation depending on the value of Reynolds number so uh, you need to have something like, uh, like an if conditional and actually um, Excel has an if conditional uh, uh, function which is really uh, really nice um, and most most of people do not know that Excel have this option um, and it's it's really uh, helpful in, in cases like this so it's um, the way it, it, it you write the uh, the if conditional function is by opening if uh, or I mean to write equal and then if and then open the bracket then you write the logical test otherwise I like either it's um, uh, Reynolds below 0.1, between 0.1 and 1,000, whatever, this is the, the logical test. And you will see this in the, in the Excel sheet uh, in, in a few minutes. And then the first thing or the first option after the comma would be the value if true. So if this logical test is uh, valid, then you will go to this. Uh, and otherwise, you can leave this blank or you can write something here like you have two options or just one option if it's right. Um, so this is what we're going to do. The logical test would be this. Uh, would be I'm sorry is it this uh, column which is Reynolds well, I'm sorry which which region of Reynolds we are working in and the value if true and value if false would be one of these depending on uh, which um, which logical test you are uh, you are trying to uh, validate so let's go to Excel and see how uh, this works so I have everything here ready but I'll just delete everything 
just to uh, start from scratch. So here are the the um, the uh, the properties of the fluid and the particle um, that we have here, uh, and this is the equation. This is everything about the CD. So everything is okay. And now we need to um, see what steps we need to go on first. So the first thing we need to um, have the equations of CD. So we will we will write all the equations and then. Um, and then see, but I need to assume a value of CD, let's say I'll assume a value of 1 and then calculate CD uh, from Reynolds number, so we need to get Reynolds number first so Reynolds number is um, the row of the fluid multiplied by the velocity which I assume divided by or multiplied by the particle diameter divided by the viscosity <coughs> and then the CD can be calculated from this Reynolds number um, so in this case it will be 24 over, I'm sorry, 24 over Reynolds number and here would be 24 over Reynolds number multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.14 multiplied by Reynolds power 0 0.7 and this will be 0.44 and the last one equals um, 0.19 minus 80,000 over Reynolds number. So we have the four values of the CD um, and we can pick whatever one of them and actually this would be the um, the thing where, where we put the if conditional um, we will we will see which which uh, region of Reynolds is this and then we will go and pick one of these. So <coughs> I'm sorry this will be the um, the uh, cool part of this video. So you write first if conditional so before I, I do this, um, you need to uh, tell Excel that you will you will uh, see if Reynolds is smaller than this. You will have this. You will pick the first one. Otherwise, you need to see if it's one of these. Uh, if if it's in this region, then you will pick the second one. And then if it's not, then you will go pick one of these two. So you have more than one if conditional um, in in series, like one in, and inside the other, inside the other. So um, you can you can write the the if conditional here uh, directly. Um, but in case you are not very familiar with this, it's easier, uh, at least in the beginning, to uh, press on the function button here and do it uh, step by step. So the logical test will be the, um, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, it's smaller than or smaller than 0 0.1. Uh, what is smaller than, if Reynolds smaller than 0.1. And here it, uh, he tells you that it's false, but in, but in, case, in this case we, we want to make um, uh, a formula that will be suitable for any, any value of uh, CD or for any uh, value of velocity. So we will, we will do everything as if it, it's, it's going to work for them all. And then the value if true will be this, but the value of false if false would be one of these three. And this means that you have to write another if conditional inside the first one. So the cool thing that um, uh, if this if this um, if this uh, test or the logical test of argument is uh, valid, then he will go to this uh, value if true, and this this is not going to be of any importance to the if conditional anymore. But if this is not apl applicable, then he will go directly to this. So in this cell, whatever you write here, it's already Reynolds is greater than 0.1 because this is not valid. So you don't need to write the Reynolds is bigger than 0.1 because it's already bigger than 0.1 here. So um, I'll press OK and then he told you it's false because at this point we didn't give an option in case of false. So we will write another if conditional and then you can press on this again and then the logical test would be the Reynolds number in this case it's smaller than 1000 in this case he tells you it's it's true here as you see and the value if true will be this and the value of false will be another if conditional so I will uh, now just one bracket was missing so this is the case but it's not done you need to do another another um, if conditional to uh, include these two uh, values of CD. So another if conditional. In this case, I'll, I'm, I'm gonna write this directly. I'm I'm gonna say if Reynolds number if it is smaller than oops smaller than three hundred fifty thousands and the value if true would be this and the value of false would be this. So it's exactly what we did in the previous two if conditionals but just without doing this. And actually Excel is nice um, when you go to the you, you're writing in the value if false it will be in bold 
and if you're writing the value if true it's gonna in bold uh, gonna be in bold and if you're writing the, the logical test it's gonna be in bold so it's telling you where are you writing the formula actually so now it's done he is picking this let me just make all these in the format of general so we don't have a problem to compare this to this so this is now this um, one thing uh, nice to that that's nice to do is to check the uh, if conditional that you wrote so you can try any value of velocity if you try like very very small velocity then it's gonna take the first value if you um, are going for one uh, it's gonna go for the second because it's in this region let's do the general as well if you increase it to 100 then uh no not yet uh or there's yeah it's it's picking the 0.44 because Reynolds is between these two if you pick a, a huge number it's gonna take this value so it's the if condition is going very very nicely let's go back to one and then do the iterations it's not something new you're gonna write the equation it's four multiplied by 9.81 and of course you have to make sure that the units are homogeneous and then row p minus row um, then multiply it by the particle diameter divided by um, 3 multiplied by the CD that you already picked which is one of these four multiplied by the row of the fluid and close the brackets and of course it's not gonna be the same so we, we will do the difference as we are always used to do and then use solver to do this uh, oops to do this um, uh, uh, iteration so I'm gonna ask the solver to set this cell to be equal to zero by changing <coughs> by changing the assumed V and um, there is nothing else we need to do and I'll press solve and um, there's a problem uh, let's keep this solution and see what's the problem so the problem here is that the velocity went to a negative value a negative value uh, led to a neg negative Reynolds number and Reynolds number would give you a negative CD and then negative under the square root is not valid so it's gonna give you an error <coughs> here and of course here so the um, the the problem here is that the solver was not able to get the solution and of, co of course it's weird but um, sometimes the solver have some limitation uh, and these limitations are because of the as far as I understand the the way it uh, does the iterations and as you see it sometimes goes non-linear and sometimes simple I don't know what's the difference between these but um, there are some options that you can like go and take a look at I'm, I'm not very familiar with these um, but maybe you can change this and get um, uh, a solution uh, easily then, then like w without without trying any other trick so um, uh, the uh, the other solution that we can do is to uh, try the other tool that we have to do the iteration and we know the other one was the gold seek and actually we don't like the gold seek as we like the solver because the gold seek is um, not as powerful and doesn't give us a lot of options as uh, solver does but let's see I'll ask the solver to get this to the value of zero by changing the assumed value and let's see so okay so it did it um, as you see it, the the values are very close and the difference is 0 0.00038 um so st still I'm, I'm not sure maybe it's going uh, in a simple way of iterations and that's why it went to the solution directly but the like the the final thing that we have now is that the gold seek did uh, solve the problem that the solver couldn't but the still we have um, some um, difference in the two values of velocity it's not the exact value and maybe somebody needs to get a very accurate um, value one option is to try the solver because we already are close maybe it can converge easy, easily now because you don't need to uh, like divert like g get closer to uh, a far answer um, and the other thing that you can trick the gold seek so he the gold seek sees this difference as an error <coughs> I'm sorry and and he's what he's trying to do is to minimize this error so if I exaggerate this error like multiply this by 10,000 100,000 anything so this value is very big uh, compared to the uh, the tolerance that it has of course the Excel doesn't know anything and doesn't understand that this is difference between these two values I'm just making the problem bigger in front of him so he can get it uh, solved uh, more so I'm, I'm gonna ask him to get it to zero by changing this and press OK. So as you see, it's still five or six decimal places. It's exactly the same 
value and if we get get back to this original difference it's something to the 10 to the minus 12 so you have exactly the same number um, so today I was just um, interested in, in getting you uh, introduced to the uh, if conditional and um, to see uh, the like the solver problem and how you can trick the goal seek to give you accurate results then it's used to do and uh, thank you